All right, let's take a look at the settings inside of vMix. There's quite a few of them, and we really need to take a peek because there's a lot to learn about vMix settings. Now, starting with display, let's go, uh, see if I can zoom in a little bit here. I want to be able to show this in a full screen if possible. Here we go. Um, starting with display, we have the ability to change the theme a little bit. Almost everybody kind of goes with this default charcoal theme, but you can change quite a lot of the colors, including the preview and output colors. Uh, I never have touched those though in my life. I just kind of leave it all of that the same uh, because it looks nice and it's just kind of the standard that everyone follows and it's what you'll see in all the tutorials in this online course as well. Now, the master frame rate is generally set to 30 frames per second, but if you are doing sports, for example, you may consider doing 60 frames per second. So something to think about, you would want to set everything in your production to the same frame rate. So if your cameras are 30 frames, your production should be 30 frames. You can also set your output up to 4K and beyond, um, and you can set the aspect ratio. Now, these two full screen options are to tell vMix what display you want the full screen video to output to. I have four options. I have a graphics card with four video outputs. And I'm telling vMix that if I click full screen one, it will take up display three. Now, you can figure out what display one, two, three, and four are by going into display settings in Windows and actually seeing which one is designated as one, two, three, four. Now there's an input size here that actually changes the size of the inputs that we've been looking at in vMix, the preview and output. So you can kind of change your layout a little bit in this display area. Now in the outputs tab, we can set up what we want to output. You can see we have four outputs here and these affect the external, and these also affect what are available over NDI as well. So for example, we've got these two full screen outputs, and maybe full screen two, we want to be a multi-view. Now a multi-view, as you can see here, can, be, can look up in different ways, and you can actually customize the layout of a multi-view. But essentially, the multi-view is the ability to look at output, preview, and maybe eight more inputs on a full screen monitor so you can see everything that's going on in vMix quickly at a glance. Now these outputs can all have NDI turned on and you can actually go into the settings and really you know, uh, figure out what you want. Uh, usually I have these on like 720 resolution. Um, you can change the SRT caller information and you can turn off and on a lot of NDI settings, including the ability to make all cameras, all vMix calls, and all audio inputs NDI outputs. So if you're on another computer and you want to be able to see a pull up a, a video, um, any of the cameras that you have in your vMix system, you can do so. Now, in options, you just have a bunch of different options um, for starting in advanced mode, selecting from one of the supported languages, starting maximized, starting with the external output. I don't usually have that on, but the external output, as we mentioned, allows you to send the output of vMix into a software like Zoom or Skype. Um, remember your positioning, display confirmation, that's when you click record stream or external if you want it to show an OK button. Uh, display confirmation for input close. I don't usually have that on. It's not on by default, but if you accidentally close an input, it'll ask you if you really wanted to do that. Of course, now there's the undo button. You have some options for what you see on the um, vMix setup. So for example, if you don't want to see those transition bars, if you don't want to see the T-bar, if you don't need to see the production clocks, you can turn all of that off. And of course, you can uh, enable the vMix control surface and the controller plug and play. Now under performance, this is something that everyone should know about. This is, you can, this is where you can enable your NVIDIA graphics card 
and enable low latency capture in a high performance mode. I can't tell you how many times someone said, oh, you know, there's a second of or a half a second of latency between my camera sources and the projectors or televisions that I'm seeing them on. Well, enable low latency capture and that will help a lot. Okay. Now, um, you have some different output and display methods that are here, including the ability to show GPU and CPU. Now, the decoders generally you don't need to touch or change, but this allows you to change the decoders that vMix is using. This is your default recording file name and type along with the default recording folder and the memory buffer. These are the external output options, and those external options can have an audio delay, and you can choose to use the external renderer or the vMix video and streaming renderer, which is the default. Now, some of the defaults for audio allow you to automatically mix audio inputs when they come in, show the master audio meter in the main window, and show the audio meter next to the inputs. Um, we can also have the fade to black to include fading audio as well. That's a handy feature, actually. And you can have a default audio delay. You know, th that's not a bad idea to have like 20 milliseconds as a default. Audio always comes in faster than video. Now, here's the audio output. So essentially, this is the master output. Like, let's say you have some... Uh, speakers or something you want to output, and then there's the headphones that you're wearing. And then these are all of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven audio buses that you can separately send audio to. Now, the web controller is something that we're going to look at soon, but this essentially gives you a website address to go to where you can pull up full control of vMix. You can set a username and password here and lock it down so that only specific options are available. The cool thing about the controller, and we'll have a whole video dedicated to this, is you have the ability to control vMix, to initiate shortcuts, to edit titles, to turn a cell phone into a tally light, and to operate the API. Tally lights are something that are not covered in this course, but what they are is it's a simple ability to show a light, whether it's red or green, to the person on camera so they know which camera the producer is currently on in vMix. Shortcuts are available in the settings option, and we're going to go into those in more detail, but they're very simple, easy ways to turn a keyboard or an X keys or uh, inputs, a MIDI controller, to call things and do things inside of vMix. Activators go along with shortcuts in many times, but they allow you to activate lights that might be on a MIDI controller and turn them blue or red depending on the state of the vMix input that they're connected to. Scripting is something that is really highly technical. We're not going to talk about it in this course. And then I'm not going to go to my About tab because I can't show my um, vMix license to everybody. Uh, but that is where you would find the vMix license information and all of the things about your vMix setup. So there, you've got at least a familiarity now with the vMix settings that are available, and we'll move on to our next video.